Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. I wanted to share this thought with you guys for a very long time. I was just uh, going through um, a spiritual circumcision. It's just, it's, uh, I'll go into detail more about that on, on my testimony. But uh, I always thought there was more to it than just the rapture, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, we're going to focus on the... The uh, two witnesses, sorry, the two witnesses first, go into detail, we're going to find out who they are, and then we're going to talk about the rapture, and how the two witnesses are the key to the rapture, they're the key to um, Israel's salvation as well, okay? So a lot of people think that uh, the two witnesses are um, Elijah and Enoch, but uh, it's not going... I don't believe that it's going to be Elijah and Enoch because of uh, Matthew chapter 11. But Elijah and Enoch were a foretelling of what's to come because Enoch walked with God and God took him, remember? In uh, Genesis chapter 5, I believe. And, uh, and Je so Jesus Christ came down, tore that veil so we can walk with God. See the... See all the similarities right there? And so that's the rapture right there. And then Elisha, or actually Elijah, Spensa, Spensa, my bad, Elijah came with power. He was he was able to shut up the heavens. So there was no rain for three years, three and a half years. And whenever he spoke, um, his enemies would get burned. Kind of sound familiar, you know what I mean? About the, the two witnesses and stuff. And uh, um, and it, that that particular information. So whenever um, the king sends for Elisha, he sends a captain and his fifty men. And he he so he goes. They find Elisha, and then the disrespect on the captain, man. Um, I could picture Elijah just eating, and then, and then uh, the captain just uh, cursing him out. Just God just cleaned it up, you know, in his word. Um, and then he, he's Elijah says, "If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and burn and consume you and your fifty men." And as soon as he finished that, fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And it, and then. Is similar to the two prophet or the two witnesses and Elisha did even more miracles so Elisha I believe is going to be uh, Israel because in uh, I don't know if you guys remember this if you guys ever seen the left behind series the very first episode whenever they get left behind there's some planes go trying to go into Israel and then they blew up out of Miriam so it's like they had a, a force field and I do believe that that is going to happen because um, they're going to get a double portion of grace. That's what I believe. And so the the entire nation is going to be protected by angels. And, and all right, so to, um, to back up my thoughts on why it's not going to be them, uh, turn with me to chap or not chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verses 13 and 14. Again, Matthew chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, and it reads as follows. For all the prophets and the law of prophesied until John, and if they are, and if you, sorry, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. And you know how in the book of Revelations, uh, it talks about uh, the two witnesses clothed in sackcloth. And so if you go skip all the way down to verse 21 in the book, chap, book of Matthew, chapter verse 11, chapter 11 verses 21 i gotta slow down to speed up okay so in the same chapter but go go all the way to go all the way to verse 21 it says woe to chorosin sorry i butchered that i'm not good with the names and woe to you Beth said i if the mighty works were which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon. Like I said, I'm not very good with the names. Uh, 
they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So, so in the book of Revelation, so John was in the spiritual realm. God was showing him, so showing him the end times, and he saw that spiritually the two witnesses were clothed in sackcloth. So they were repenting. To get it, pretty pretty interesting, huh? Okay, and so the the Bible describes, or actually the Bible groups only two types of people. Two, and they are the sorry, uh, they are the Jews and the Gentiles. Okay, so in that, so we're studying the 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 two witnesses my goodness man i'm spacing it when we're studying the two witnesses we're looking for a key word and that key word is the olive trees okay so the first olive tree which was which is found in um jeremiah chapter 11 verses 16 oh, bear with me i'm gonna get i'm i'm looking for it as well okay so it's uh jeremiah chapter 11 verses 16 and it reads as follows the lord called your name green olive tree lovely and of good fruit sorry i was burping and so that is the first first olive tree and and the first olive tree were the jewish people they were the first olive tree and the second is found in John chapter, ah, sorry, not John. I just uh, flipped and I saw John and that's the first thing I said. But it's actually found in the book of Romans chapter 11. And so I'm going to read uh, verses 17. And if some branches of, oh, sorry. Romans chapter 11 verse 17. And if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them and with them became partaker of the root of the fatness of the olive tree so the gentiles is the the olive tree as well and, um, and i'm going to go and skip over here to verse 25 and i'm going to read from half to to the end okay so it reads as follows that blindness that in that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile comes in. So right here we're Paul is talking about the rapture. So whenever the fullness of the Gentile comes in, that's whenever God's gonna take his take uh, uh his children. And that's whenever the rapture is going to happen. And and the very next verse is very interesting. Um, okay, so if the rapture never happens, the two witnesses will never, never come. Israel will never be saved if the rapture never happens. Okay, so, and so all of Israel will be saved. Like I always said, like I always just said, Israel will. If the rapture never happens, Israel will never be saved. So God's got to trigger something in their mind. Uh, so, so in order for Israel to be saved, sorry. Um, in order, in order for Israel to be saved, they uh, something huge has to happen. I mean, huge, um, and that's what we call the rapture. So that God can trigger in their mind. Um, my goodness, our our, our Christian brethren were right all along jesus christ is the son of god and so whenever they believe they will repent and then the uh, the era of two witnesses will arrive will uh come to fruition and um okay and so that's how israel is going to be saved and and in john in order for and sorry, it's been done. And so, in okay. 
And you know how it says saved? I think that word should have been belief, but it would have been even more of a clue um, to revealing who the two witnesses were as well. Because in the book of John, chapter, the, the most famous verse, um, I think, is John 3.16. But the verse before that says, um, whoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So belief and and obedience and faith are one and the same thing. So if you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, you will obey His Word and walk by faith, and thus you will be walking by faith. Okay. So His His Word comes in through uh, many different ways. It could come through other people. Example like uh, Nathan going to David whenever um, David. Uh, committed adultery and murder um his word can come through burning bush uh, the bright light with paul so many different ways and even in in joel where it says he's going to speak through um visions and 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 dreams and also the still small voice the guidance of the holy spirit is also a form of 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 god speaking god's word okay and thus you'll be walking by faith okay so you kind of get how that how that works and stuff and uh okay so now we can talk about the rapture and so the rapture is found in the book of matthew chapter 24 verses 29 bear with me and so what we're looking for here is similarities so the main key words that we're going to look for are the sun blacking out the stars falling and uh, the four winds the angels and the four winds okay all right and it's also found in uh, mark chapter 13 verses 24 but i'd like to read from uh, the book of matthew all right so the book chapter matthew chapter 24 verses 29 and it reads as follows immediately after the tribulation immediately after the tribulation immediately after the tribulation immediately after the tribulation notice how i said that annoyingly five times because a broken record will catch your attention all right and so did jesus say before the tribulation i'm going to gather my angels from the four winds called uh, with a loud trumpet i'm going to gather my elect no he didn't right and did he say after the great tribulation um the antichrist and satan's going to make war with you kill you guys you guys are going to be dead in the street for three days then i'm going to breathe life in you and then i'm going to call you guys up he didn't so this right here tells us it's going to be mid trip mid tribulation not uh pre or post or or no true okay all right so i'm going to read it okay uh, okay so immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun remember how the key word the sun will be darkened the moon will not get its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken okay so here where jesus is talking about and also and where we find it where john also says stars um, they're talking about uh, bombs, what we call today bombs, okay? So if the actual star actually fell from heaven, it would be crispy critters before it even got to Earth. Because if our sun is one of the smallest in, in the galaxies, or, or however you want to do it in the universe, uh, scientifically speaking, uh, just one would destroy the earth. But here, it's just talking about um, a destructive power on a large scale. And we know nowadays we call those uh, bombs. Cause I even had a dream where there was a bomb that hit a city and it just wiped it out. And I know like a lot of people have been having uh, those types of dreams as well. Okay, so that's God telling... Uh, telling us to get ready 
Okay, so in verse 30, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of heaven with power and great glory. And I will send, and he will send his angels with a great a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather his elect, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds. Remember the the uh, the star, sun, and the, the four winds? Angels in the four winds, sorry. Okay. And you'll gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth to the other. Okay, so we'll, where do we find that in the book of Revelations? We find that in chapter 6, verses 12. Okay, so I'll go ahead and read that. Oh, oh, oh. And all the way down to verse, verse um, two. And wait, wait, chapter six, verses twelve, to chapter seven, verses two. I'm gonna go ahead and read that whole thing. Okay, then, oh, sorry. I looked when he opened the sixth seal. Behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Remember the sun darkening. And the moon became like blood, and the stars, remember the stars I was telling you guys about? F of heaven fell to earth as a, as a fig tree drops its late figs. When it is shaken by a mighty wind, then, they, then the sky uh, receded as a scroll when it, rolled up, when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, rich men, and, and commandors, or commanders, sorry, and mighty men, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in caves and uh, the rocks and the, of the mountains. And they said to the mountain and the rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the Lamb, or from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? And who is able to stand? Okay, so right there, and I'm going to, I'll just keep going. So chapter 7. After these things I saw the four angels, remember the four angels, standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on the trees, or on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of God, seal of the living God. And you remember how I was saying that um, something's got a trigger in, in Israel's mind to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, or else they'll never be saved. Here it is right here. And then that seal is is they're sealing uh, um, the the Israelites that uh, that finally believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, and and they've finally repented. Okay, so we'll, I'm gonna go back to um, verse seventeen on uh, chap on chapter six. Okay, so for the great day of His wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So the day of the Lord is pretty much salvation for his children, the ones that are bearing good fruit, the green olive trees, and wrath for the disobedient, okay? Um, the best example I can give you guys is Daniel, Ashra, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm sorry, I, I butchered their names, but the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, and Daniel were were um, good trees and uh, they they Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were cast into the fire but they were saved by God and Daniel was cast into the lion's den but he was saved by God and was able to um, prophesy as well the end times and so the day of the Lord was upon Israel but he saved his children Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep on reading. 
in all right so, so we're gonna go to chapter 7 verses uh, 13 and 14 then one of the el oh, then one of the elder answered and saying unto me who are these arrayed with white robes where they where did they come from verse 14 so I'm gonna start I'm sorry I kind of butchered that whole that whole verse I'm gonna start all over then one of the elders answered and said to me who are these arrayed with white robes and where did they come from verse 14 and I said to him sir you know so he said to me these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation the great tribulation okay remember how jesus said just tribulation after immediately after the tribulation remember okay so these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And who is he talking about right here? Who are they talking about? The two witnesses. The Jews and the Gentiles. Those are the two witnesses. And just to conclude this all up. So after the rapture, there is another boat that you can catch. Well, if you count uh, the beheading, uh, uh, the boat number two. Um... Or, and but the last boat I'm talking about is the two witnesses, or the witness program. Um, but I gotta tell you guys, it's if you think serving God is hard now, just imagine when full on persecution. I mean, they're going to be hunting Christians down, and you know how I know that. Uh, not every Christian is going to have that type of power of the two witnesses. Come with me to uh, verses, or actually, Revelations 20. Verses 6. There's a 5 or 6. Nope, it's actually four. Sorry, four. Okay. And I saw the thrones, and they sat on them, and judge, and judgment was commend, committed to them. And then I saw the souls of those who were beheaded. Their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast and or his image, and had not received the mark on their foreheads or their hands. Okay. So that right there tells me that... Um, not everybody's going to have that type of power. So, um, if I could just reach just one person back to their God, or 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 even just introduce them to Jesus Christ, that would, that would be my that would be actually my goal. To be honest with you, because if it's if it's difficult now to serve God. Just imagine when full-on persecution is going to happen. The best example I can put it is for for um, is actually uh, David and Goliath. This is a perfect example. I don't know how to put it. So Goliath was um, Goliath was just taunting the soldiers of Israel, the armies of the living God. And even the anointed Saul. So if the armies were not able to stand against a demonic force. And then it's, and it's, it's going to be pretty impossible to stand up against a demonic force if you don't have your oil. So... David was the only one that actually stood up to that demonic force because he was fuel he was filled up with that oil. He spent time with God. He spent it in a, his secret place while he was watching um 
his father's sheep. He spent time with God every day. And that's how he filled up his lamp. And that's how he was able to withstand against Goliath and actually slay him. So if... If um, Saul wasn't able to do it and he was anointed as well. And he, he never sought out the... He never looked for the presence of God. And he never and he wasn't able to stand against a Goliath, a demonic force. So if I can just help you guys reach or help you guys um, develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's 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 pretty much my main goal here um, is to to help somebody, you know. And um, there was another thought that I wanted to. To share with you guys. And it kind of slipped my mind. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to end it with these, these last two chapters, okay? Or actually, two verses. And they're also um, in the book of Revelation. So the first one I'm going to read is Revelation chapter 4, verses 1. Notice how he says this twice in the book of Revelation. Okay, so... Um, okay, so I'm going to read this follow. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the, and the voice... And the first voice which came, I heard, was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. Okay, and then and then we also find that where the two witnesses get slayed by um, the the um, Satan and and then the Antichrist. Okay, so it's found in chapter eleven, verses eleven and twelve. So I'm gonna just read those two verses now. After three day three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and great fear great fear fell on those who saw them and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them come up here so whenever God calls you up to heaven you made it to heaven so that's the second boat that's the last boat and you know how on um, Revelations 20 um sex bless it says blessed are the the blessed is he who who it takes part of the first res resurrection and the first resurrectioners are the people who are getting beheaded and uh and the rapture those are the first ones so it doesn't really talk about the the two witnesses so where would they fall in the prize where would they go you know what i mean this is my thought so in my thought the two witnesses are going to go through the white throne judgment to show everyone um, what they could have had. In other words, my thought anyways. Um, but like I was saying, so if God calls you to heaven, you made it to heaven. So, And there is hope after the rapture. You just The reason why God doesn't want nobody to get left behind is because... Not everybody's going to um, be able to handle the spiritual circumcision. I mean, it's I, I, I went through it twice. It's it's rough. It's really rough. I'll, I'll go into more detail, like I said in the, my next video. Um, it's going to be hell on earth. In other words, chapter 11 in the book of Revelation and chapter 13 are going to be happening at the same time. And... They're just going to be hunting people down to get the mark of the beast. To they're just going to it's just going to be a war. It's just going to be a all out war. Okay, so how it looks like, and, and I kind of messed up the drawing a little bit, but um, what I the drawing kind of looks like this: a uh, seven year tribulation, God's mercy, or uh, time to go home. Okay, so the it's going to be a mid trip. And then who, this whole time they might be he beheading people or it could just be in this little area right here as well, just in that spot. 
with the rapture and then the beheading and then the era of power okay and so and it's going to be a all out war between the um, uh, disobedient and the uh, uh, and the antichrist with with the two witnesses okay and there there is there is hope uh and after the rapture there is hope it's just gonna be a thousand times harder um just to give you a heads up on that love you guys be blessed be encouraged in jesus name